I don't usually like to make these kind of talking head videos where there's no actual hardware in hand to show everybody. But with the recent announcement of AMD's Zen 3 based Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, this is actually worth talking about because the type of generational improvements and performance gains that AMD is promising here is really unheard of these days in the PC hardware industry. So we're going to take a look at some of the information that AMD has shared so far and see what that might mean for PC gamers and hardware enthusiasts. The Zen microarchitecture has been a huge success for AMD over the last few years. The initial products based on this design were the original Ryzen 1000 series CPUs. It was the very first time that the Ryzen brand was introduced to the world. And I think a lot of people would agree that this was the first time in over a decade that Team Red really had a product that could compete at the high end that was actually worth considering. That was followed up by Zen Plus, and then Zen 2 came along and really took things to a whole new level of performance and value. And that's what brings us to today with Zen 3. And it looks Looks like it might just bring with it a whole new level of performance yet again, at least according to the info AMD shared with us so far. Zen 3 is based on an updated 7 nanometer process, which is just a more refined version of what's currently under the hood on Zen 2 based products, which are in the consumer market known as Ryzen 3000 series processors. But they've made a fundamental change to the layout and how the cores communicate and access cache. We've now got eight cores on a single die that can access the full 32 megabytes of shared cache and communicate with one another directly. This design not only simplifies things, but it should result in a significant reduction in memory latency, which benefits applications like games and other single core workloads. There's also some other tweaks and enhancements with Zen 3 as you might expect from a new microarchitecture, and all these things combined translate into an IPC uplift of 19% over the previous generation. That's a super impressive generational performance uplift for a new CPU architecture these days. And it's even more impressive when you consider how good the existing Ryzen 3000 series CPUs are when stacked up against the competition. And what's even more impressive is that they somehow managed to do all this without increasing the overall TDP on the new CPUs. And actually in the case of the new Ryzen 5600X, they actually decreased the TDP somehow. Zen 3 CPUs are being branded as the Ryzen 5000 series in what looks like an attempt by AMD to simplify and clarify their product stack. So over on the mobile side, you've got the 4000 series, and then over here on the desktop side, AMD is going from the 3000 series and jumping straight to 5000. And I actually think it's a good idea because it should help consumers clearly identify and differentiate between products that are designed for different applications. AMD revealed the first four CPUs in the 5000 series, starting with what'll be the entry level 50 6600X, which has 6 cores and 12 threads, a max boost of 4.6 GHz, and a price of $299. Leading the product stack at the high end will be the 5950X with 16 cores and 32 threads, a max boost of 4.9 GHz, and a price of $799. If you compare this pricing to the 3000 series, you can see that things are generally starting to creep upward with this generation. And I actually think that's to be expected, because AMD knows exactly where they stand in relation to the competition, and they no longer have to position themselves as the value option in the market. And over the last few years, AMD has displayed and demonstrated their ability and willingness to push the envelope and to drive innovation and consistently deliver new and exciting products. So I'm hoping that this turns out to be a good thing. A little bit of extra revenue will hopefully mean even better products in the future. This slide from AMD's presentation is really interesting, where they claim that the 5900X can beat the 3900XT by up to 50% in some games at 1080p resolution. Now keep in mind if you're gaming at 1440p or 4K, the results won't be anywhere near this, but still, it's a good indication of overall IPC uplift. And they also showed the 5900X beating the Intel 10900K in a single-threaded test in Cinebench. And that result should scare the crap out of Intel, because single-threaded performance and applications is really the only area where they still had a bit of a lead over AMD. So if AMD caught up or surpassed them in single-threaded performance and already had them beat with the previous generation in multi-core performance, where does that leave Intel going into 2021? AMD says the new Ryzen 5000 series CPUs are going to be available on November 5th, which is not that far away. And it sounds like they've been busy producing product leading up to this launch. So maybe we'll actually be able to buy these CPUs on launch day or shortly after. Maybe Nvidia should hire AMD to help with their product launches. I've been trying to buy an RTX 3080 since they launched them and I can't find them in stock anywhere. And I'm sure a lot of you are in the same position. With Zen 3, it's really starting to look like AMD for the first time in a long time 
might hold the performance crown in everything, leaving Intel's core series completely behind. But before we can draw any definitive conclusions, we're just gonna have to wait a little bit longer until retail copies of these CPUs can make it into the hands of reviewers for some independent testing and results. Only then are we gonna truly know the definitive answer as to how these CPUs stack up against the competition and also AMD's own existing Ryzen 3000 series. But with the November 5th launch just around the corner, the good news is we're not gonna have to wait much longer to find out. Thanks for watching this video. Leave us a comment down below and let us know what you think of the new Ryzen 5000 series CPUs and the Zen 3 microarchitecture. And also I'm curious if you're gonna be upgrading to one of these new CPUs and what you plan to do going into 2021 with your system. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and we'll see you soon.